Hello, 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 R.C. Blakes here, and I am so excited to be able to share with you tonight. I know some of you are saying, he's back again on a second night. That's a rare occasion. It is, but I've been, I've been doing a lot of contemplating and thinking and uh, been reading a lot of your emails. And so it, um, it stirs me to, um, it stirs me to share um, out of those things I'm inspired by. And so here I am tonight. I want to, I want to look at something tonight, but before I get into it, I need you, if this is your first time here, I need you to um, subscribe to my channel. If you, fig if you figure out that this is something worthwhile and helpful to you, um, we want you to be a part of our family officially. Don't just drop in and chime in, but be a part of our family officially. Um, also, you will discover in the description when I'm done that there's a link for a counseling service called Better Help. It's a, it's a uh, group that uh, we're partnered with. And so I refer people to them because I'm not a counselor. I'm not a psychologist or a therapist. I'm just a, a man and a preacher. And uh, I share my thoughts. So if that's something you need, counseling, um, especially in these times by way of phone and the internet, BetterHelp is among the best that do it. Now, um, I also understand that um, YouTube has changed some things and there are a lot of ads in the middle of our um, sessions. I just want you to know that's not my doing. I'm working on um, something that will allow me to rectify some of that. Of course, the ads support what I do financially, but I don't want a million ads in the middle of my um, in the middle of my discussions. So we're going to um, we're going to rectify that. It's you know just just. Just know that um, we are, and that's, you know, that's, people are so quick to assume, well, uh, you know, he put all of those ads in, I did not. It's just a change that YouTube has made, and it's something that um, I have to adjust personally. It's just uh, fortunate and unfortunate that I have so much content that I have to use a certain software to be able to change that feature over all of the content. I need you to invite somebody, call them, tell them to chime in now, text somebody, email them, tell them, subscribe or go to RSC Blakes Jr. on YouTube. We're getting ready to discuss some stuff that uh, every woman needs to hear. This is um, looking for the books. I always look for them after, I'm, after I've hit the button and they're not here. This is another, another level of the father-daughter talk. And uh, what I want to talk about tonight is that a woman must never sell herself short, never sell her dignity. A woman must never sell her dignity because I'm seeing, I'm seeing quite a lot of... Um, Oh, male, uh, what is it, toxic masculinity that's being paraded. And I'm looking at a lot of women that are entertaining it. And the mere fact that you entertain certain things. And do you all mind if I just take my time and talk like this tonight? Just, just allow me to just kind of be me tonight completely. Um... The mere fact that you're entertaining certain things is a clear indication to you that um, something's broken in you. Yeah, something's broken. Um, but there are certain things that a woman of dignity should never do with a man, a woman of dignity. You know that text I always read and everybody likes to reference it where it talks about silly women. Well, when it, 
when it uses the term silly, it, it's speaking of women that are not dignified. And it's not necessarily speaking of their education. Uh, it's not even speaking of their necessarily their religious persuasion. Doesn't necessarily indicate that they are immoral, but it calls them silly and they're easily led by clowns and crowns. That's the para. That's my, you know, that's the way I paraphrase it. And and you as an individual woman, you have to listen. You have to really stop being a follower. Let me talk to you now. Let me talk to you. Some of you are going to get angry with me. No sense in you sending me all those angry emails because once I pick up the spirit of it, I don't read it no way. I don't, I don't read angry emails. You got to stop being a follower. You're following all of these women who are clueless and it's the blind leading the blind and everybody's falling into the ditch. Why would you follow? Why would you be influenced by your girlfriend or your girlfriend's girlfriend or your bestie and none of them have their act together? I mean, I know you love them. I got family that I love, but, you know, it is what it is. None of them have their act together. I don't allow just because I love you doesn't mean that I'm going to allow you to influence my life or that I'm going to follow you. I have some relatives that are crackheads. I have relatives that are criminals. They, you know, they, you, their address, their mailing address is the prison system. In and out. Well, I love them. When I'm around them within certain boundaries, I enjoy being around them. But I'm not going to allow them to lead me and influence me. And there are too many women that are influencing other women to fall to his lows in terms of your dignity. You're, in other words, you're better than this. Your mama didn't raise you like this. Your grandma would turn over in her grave. The stuff you carrying on right now, it is so far beneath you and you're trying to figure out why I'm miserable. Why don't I have any joy? Why am I depressed? It's because you are your Chanel bag being sold on a Walmart shelf. Ooh, I just said something right there. That's a T-shirt if, if I ever heard one. You are feeling the way you're feeling because you are a Chanel bag being sold on a Walmart shelf. Your place. You're out of place. I say it one more time. You're out of place. So I have four things that I want to go through tonight. I'm going to try not to be an hour. I'm just going to try to get it out and, and uh, let you all have the rest of your evening. But these are some things that I want to share with you from a father's perspective and from the perspective of a man. See, my assignment and my mission, of course, is to build up all people. You know, now I have the Kingology movement. I think even maybe tomorrow night I may be back here again teaching Kingology, but I know that God gave me the assignment of speaking in, speaking into the lives of women as a father, as a big brother, as a pastor, as, you know, whatever you see me as, but as a positive, safe soul that's going to go straight down the middle. I'm not going to tell you you're right when you're wrong. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong when you're right. You know, and so I have a heart for women. And I believe that the first inclination of manhood is the protection of womanhood. Any man that does not have a desire to protect women. There's something wrong with his manhood or his so-called masculinity. It's toxic in some way. We have brothers that regularly tune into this and they know that 
85, 90% of the time, I'm going to be talking specifically to women. But there's something in a real man that it resonates with him when another man is seeking to preserve and to save and to rescue womanhood because manhood is built up on womanhood. God gave the woman to the man to help him to be his best. Any wise man wants to make certain that the women in his world are at their best because for the man to be his best, the woman has to be her best. And so this is why you hear me constantly dealing with these things. But number one, never allow a man's, thank you so much, never allow a man's, listen to this very carefully, never, I'm, I'm going to say this slowly, never allow a man's malicious criticism of you to take root. Never allow a man's malicious criticism of you to take root. And the reason I, I put that in there is because sometimes you'll have a man in your life that will rightfully criticize you constructively. You have to be able to differentiate. You have to be able to receive that. But the, even that man won't be some random man off of the street that steps into your life and all he has for you is a laundry list of criticisms. And you certainly don't allow a man whose criticisms of you are injurious intentionally and his criticisms of you are malicious. He intends to break you. He intends to hurt you. Uh, you can tell by his tone. You can tell by the words that he's using. He's always he always has a negative um, opinion when it comes down to you. You can do no no right. You can do no good. Let that stuff take root in you, because one of the ways listen to me very well. One of the ways a a man um, plants himself in the soul of a woman. Thank you. Thank you. Watch this. Is that. Watch this. Listen to this very carefully now. This is the kind of stuff the devil never did want you to hear or learn. One of the ways a man intentionally plants himself into the soul of a woman that he may manipulate her like a puppet is that, watch this, he breaks her down. He intentionally drains her self-esteem and he brings her solo, he brings her to a point where her entire focus is this man's approval and getting him to say something good about me, getting him to say something nice about me, getting him to approve of me. Not, not no other man, this man, the one that broke me is the one I need to fix me. That's, that's one of the effects of broken consciousness. And I call it the approval trap. And so when a man is seeking to manipulate a woman emotionally, he will have everything negative to say about her. He'll start rating you from, you know, one to ten. Oh, you about a six. You about a five. You about a, you, oh, you may be a, maybe a four. And the reality is, in, in his mind, you're a nine or a ten. Eight, nine, or ten. If you're eight, he's going to tell you you're four. If you're nine, he's going to tell you you're five. If you're 10, he's going to tell you you're three. And he breaks you down to the point because he knows that, that the criticism is going to plant itself in your soul. And he breaks you down to a point that you are solely seeking his approval. You just, thank you so much. You want his approval. It doesn't matter how many great men come into your life and tell you how wonderful you are. That soul tie has you locked in on, has you, has you committed to winning his approval and he will never give it because he, he disapproved of you intentionally to get you hooked on his approval and now you're caught up in the approval trap. Never allow a man's malicious criticisms of you to take root. Now, what do, we, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Don't allow it to take root. Well, 
you got to kind of, you know, and I guess when I was preparing to share with you uh, and I was thinking about this point, uh, there's a movie that, um, I don't know, got to be 20 plus years, um, The Matrix. Thank you so much. Where Lawrence Fishburne and uh, Keanu Reeves, I think it is, starring it. And there's this, this scene where this fighting is going on and they slow it down. And every time a punch would come, Keanu Reeves would just fall away from it so that it would go through and miss him. Well, when you start hearing people criticizing you or having negative things to say about you, don't lean into that because it's, it's going to hit, it's going to connect. What you have to do is you have to recognize what's going on, that this person is intentionally trapping you. And what you have to do is emotionally, you have to fall away from it. Don't entertain it and don't even respond to it. When a man has malicious criticisms of you, calling you, talking under your clothes, calling you out of your name, you know, accusing you of things, don't lean into that. Don't even engage that. That is beneath you. Come on now. That is beneath you. You are a queen conscious woman. You are a, a virtuous woman. You are a woman of dignity and you do not entertain fools. Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 26, 4 and 5. It says, answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. When you answer him, it's like you're validating or justifying the foolishness coming out of his mouth. When a man is maliciously criticizing you, you automatically know that there has to be distance put between you and that man. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. But he says, casting down imaginations. See, all of those negative words are designed to do what? Create imaginations in your mind and to set up strongholds in your head that you can't shake. And what is a stronghold? It's a thought system that you can't shake. It locks a negative um, consequence into your life that you can't get away from it. You get stuck in it. And, and, and men many times will use, quite often should I say, men use negative criticism of the woman to break her down, empty her self-esteem, so that he can manipulate and control her and abuse her. It's one, of the, it's one of the most used tactics to emotionally control a woman. And a lot of these men, to be quite honest with you, um, that use this hate women. The majority of them are just perverted and have a perverted sense of masculinity that says, the more women you can control and manipulate and have sex with, the, you know, the, the more authentic your manhood, which is totally untrue. But then you have another group that, are, that hate womanhood. They hate women. Now, they'll pass themselves off as being you know, a counselor or therapist or whatever to women. But the reality is that nothing comes out of their mouths that builds you up. Everything that comes out is designed to tear you down. And so they hate men like me. They call men like me, um, I don't know, call me a simp. I don't even know what a simp is, you know. Um, but I'm a classical man, you know. I take care of my wife. My wife takes care of me. I'm a classical man. My wife respects me and honors me while they run in their mouth. I got a woman that respects me and honors me and helps me. Ain't no monkey man over here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing weak about me. I couldn't live with Lisa Blakes and be a little weak man. I'm a godly man, though. I'm a godly man with, with the right intentions towards womanhood. But a lot of these clowns y'all dealing with today, and you, and you 
ear to these people and they're constantly tearing you, they're beating you down, beating you down, beating you down. Vulgar language and there's nothing that you can do that is right. You never look good enough, you never small enough, you never dress well enough, you, you, you're you just not enough. That's the message, you're not enough. There you go. Number two. So number one was never allow a man's a man's malicious criticism of you to take root. See, like there are times you come in, I have criticisms, but they're always constructive. I always, I always share those criticisms in what? The spirit of love as as a father would to his children or a brother would to his siblings or his sisters. That's where it comes from as a pastor would to his sheep. That's where it comes from. And it's, it's wrapped in love. But then you have this group that is what? Again, malicious. Number two, never chase a man. Never chase a man. I hear y'all on some of these, all over this social media stuff, talking about this is a new day and uh, the, you know, the woman could go after what she want. Well, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Okay, this is a new day. I'll give you that. You say the woman got to go after what she want. Well, I'll tell you this much. No real man that is husband material is going to be attracted to a woman chasing him down. So go after what you want. But all I'm telling you is you ain't going to catch no husband chasing no man down. Now, you, you, you may catch a one night stand. You may catch a STD. But you ain't going to catch no husband. You may you may catch a, a, a side chick position, but you ain't going to catch no husband because a real classical man is not attracted to a woman chasing him down. And all of y'all coming hard at these men like that is it's, it's, it's beneath you. You're not supposed to be coming hard at no man like that. Now, are you supposed to make a brother know that you're interested, that you appreciate? Of course, but we're going to talk about that. You got to move. You, you don't move ahead of him. You know, don't outrun the brother. Don't be the first one out of the mouth. I love you. And brother ain't even said, I like you. Don't, you cannot chase a man. Never chase a man. There are too many of you all that are chasing I'm looking at you. You're obvious. You're thirsty looking all over in all over Instagram, all over Facebook. You are thirsty. You're dehydrated. In fact, you got to calm down because it's, it's not dignified. It's not dignified. And I believe with all of my heart that the Lord gave me the energy and the will to get back on here tonight to tell you. This is not what queens do. Queens don't chase men. Queens are not holding their they gown up, running through the palace after a man. I need a man. I need a man. No, 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 no. A woman, listen to this well now. A woman must possess a dignity that never allows her to be so desperate for a man that she starts to hunt. You got to let the brother play his role. If a man is not assertive enough to hunt for you, to chase you and to win you, he ain't, he's not assertive enough to keep you. If you got to chase a man to get him, you go, you're going to be running behind him the rest of your life. You, you chase the man down, you tackle the man, you hog tie the man, bring the man to the altar, make the man marry you, then you get married and now he got to be a husband which means he has to be assertive and he got to take the lead. And you sitting there talking about, I just don't understand why he don't take the lead. It's because you never let him. You never discovered that he, he did not have leadership in him. So the way you start is the way you're going to have to finish. Never chase a man. The Bible says in Colossians 3.18, wives, watch the, watch the wording here. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Now, what is that talking about? That's talking about male, female energy. Everybody get hung, gets hung up on that term submit. But that's talking about male, female energy. That means the brother has to have what? 
the ability to lead and to take charge. And then the woman is supposed to be able to do what? Submit to that. See where he's going, understand where he's leading, and then, sum then submit to that. Well, you out here running a man down. Okay, let me, some of y'all still act like, I mean, those of y'all way in the back of the room, I'm talking to you right now. You are not supposed to be blowing no man's phone up every day and the brother don't call you. If a man doesn't call you, you're not supposed to be calling him. Unless he's your husband. If you're just out there dating a man and a man does not call you, thank you so much. You are not supposed to call him. You're not supposed to be blowing this man's phone up. When you had a million text messages, you got this. No, no, you got this wrong. And I know they're teaching y'all all kind of stuff all over this YouTube, all over social media, that a woman got to go for what she want. Well, I'm just here to tell you that you are not going to catch no husband chasing no man down. Always the one, here's a rule, here's a rule, always follow the man's lead in the relationship. Never set the pace. That's now, some women disagree with that. God bless you. I'm just, I'm, yeah. Always follow the man's lead. Never set the pace. I don't care what you're feeling in your heart. I don't care that you feel like, I feel like I love him. Well, has he, has he expressed that he love you? No, 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 no. Well, shut your mouth up. Keep that to yourself. And, and, and pull back a little bit. You're moving too fast. Always move at the pace of the man. Don't ever be out there in front and looking and the brother's still hanging. No, no, no. Never chase a man. It's the dance between male and female energy. See, see a quality man that a godly man, a real man that that is going to be strong enough that you you can respect him and, and feel his uh, his swag and gentle enough that you can actually feel safe in his arms. And, you know, and is going to honor you enough that you can actually submit to his leadership. He's not looking for a woman that's putting him up. No, no, you got to have, it's the dance between male and female energy. A real man is not looking for a woman that's chasing him down. Pimps looking for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pimps are looking for that. That's, that's the kind of stuff pimps want. Pimps want to break a woman and empty a woman so much that she's addicted to him and his approval like a crack addict is to crack cocaine. And so a pimp knows that he's accomplished his goal when she running him down. Yeah, bro, look at she she done blew my phone up. <laughs> she done blew my phone up 15 times in the last half hour. <laughs> I got a gone now, bro. I got a gone. Pimping, pimping. Yeah. It's less than dignified. It's less than, it's, it's beneath you. It's not what you're supposed to do. And some of you young girls who've had nobody to teach you, your daddy ain't been around, your mama probably didn't know nothing to teach you, please listen to me. Don't wait until you're 50 years old to look back on this video and here I'm, I'm in heaven now and you're saying, I sure wish I had listened to R.C. Blanks back in the day. And you'd have wasted your whole life running behind me because here, watch this. Listen to this right here. I need you all that will I want you to type this in the comments because I need everybody that may visit this to see this. Watch this. You never get the man. When you when you have a woman that's chasing, you never get the man that you're chasing and you always lose yourself. When you are a chaser, you never get the man and you always lose yourself. You never get the man. And you, you chasing the man, you, go, you, you never get the man and you always lose yourself.
Any woman that's chasing a man ultimately loses herself. Because it's not your role. It's not your role. It's not your role to chase no man. It's not your role to chase no man. Okay, let me go back to my own, my own marriage with my wife. My wife, those of y'all that don't know my wife, this is my wife here. Can y'all see her without them lights? Yeah, we was getting our, we was getting our GQ thing on right now. I told my wife, I don't want to be married. We have been dating for years. I don't want to be married. You know what she told me? Okay. I said, go on about your, your life because I don't want to be. She said, okay. You know what she did? She went on about her life. You know what she didn't do? She ain't called me. We had been dating for years. And I, I, I woke up one day with some kind of craziness and I said, I don't want to be married. And my wife said, okay. You know what I found out months later? Homegirl had her another boyfriend was going off with her, going on with her life. And didn't just have no any boy. She had a professional baseball player, seven figure dude. I'm, I'm a little broke, fat Baptist preacher. And I'm talking about I don't want to be married. This girl going off, she got a millionaire. Then one day I woke up and I said, this girl ain't called me. Yeah, you know, she ain't coming around. What is going on? And my mama said, boy, you're making a fool out yourself. And then my mama talked. Then the Lord said, yeah, you're making a fool out yourself. You are. The girl's your wife. And you know what I did? I got on the phone and I said, you know what? My wife. And tell the little baseball boy, go on. Now, my heart was beating hard. I ain't gonna leave this dude. This dude got a six pack. This dude is fit. This dude is rich. I'm out of shape. I'm broke. <laughs> this woman ain't gonna leave this man coming back messing around with me. But homie was chasing. And you know what? You know what drew me to my wife? That she, if my wife chased, would not be married today. And then after we got back together, she said, you know. My heart was always with you. I always loved you. But you see, a woman of dignity can have certain feelings, but she ain't going to compromise those boundaries. When you, when, you, when you go to pressing up on her dignity and you calling for her to sink you know, below the standard, she will hurt and cry at home in her privacy. She is not going to compromise the boundary of her dignity. Mess around with you. She ain't going to chase you. It's a bad look when you're out here chasing dudes. And then some of y'all around here, you know, y'all use the little the, the, uh, gate grading system or the whatever, the one to ten. Some of y'all around here eights chasing threes. You eight, you around here chasing a dude that's a three. <laughs> dude, three. Well, let me leave that alone. Praise the Lord. Number three, never listen to this very carefully. Listen to this very carefully. Never change. Never change for a man that is not proven to accept you. You know, like you hear a man say, okay, well, you know, and see, this happens especially in, in number one where they where they're doing this malicious criticism of you. Well, you know, if if uh, if you lose a little weight, you know, um, you know, it might be a do something. If 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 you, you know, you change your look, change your clothes, you know, uh, lose the more ghetto girlfriends you got, you change your church, change, change, change. You you ain't supposed to be changing your life for a man that has not committed himself to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dwight. You're not supposed to be changing your life for, for a man that you just had a conversation with and now he using this, intentionally using this malicious criticism of you to break you down. And now you there clamoring for his acceptance and now you changing all of this stuff. Man, dude, got you all on at the plastic surgeon. <laughs> 
Got the people breaking your nose, talking about your nose too flat, he want to put a point on it. <laughs> Broke all your nose up, then pushed all that stuff up in you. Now you're all uncomfortable. You got all this weight up here. All this stuff cha just did changing. Okay, now here's how the Holy Spirit gave it to me. And I'm laughing because I don't I don't want to be too deep and and you know morose. I, I want to make it a little light because this is some serious stuff that I'm talking about right here. And some of y'all is hitting you right between the eyes. And that's what I intended to do. I want to knock out punch tonight. Here's how the Holy Spirit gave it to me. The Holy Spirit said, when I was thinking about how women that lack a, an understanding of who they are and they, they lack the dignity they must have, find yourselves changing for people that don't deserve that kind of uh, prioritization. Here's how the Holy Spirit gave it to me. And I think you'll get it with this. Can you make alterations? You, you, those of you that are shoppers, can you make alterations to a garment you've not first purchased? Can you go into a store and say, OK, I like this dress. Um, you know, take three, four inches out of it. Then I'm going to see if I want to buy it or not change it, then I'm going to see if I, no, no, no. You got to purchase the dress before you can make any alterations. Now, some people say, um, I ain't changing for nobody. Even after I get married, I ain't changing. Well, if you ain't changing, you ain't going to be able to make no, no relationship work. I'm going to tell you that now. I had to change to be married to Lisa. Lisa had to change to be married to me. And you know what we have to do? We're continually changing for each other. But I'm not going out here. If, if Lisa's out of my life, you know, she's gone on to heaven, God forbid, or she decided to leave me and I'm out here as a single man, I'm not going to be out in these streets changing for somebody that, uh, you know, we ain't, we ain't got no marital commitment. I'm not changing my life for you. If, if you can't love me like I am, you don't deserve me. Okay, here's another illustration. Never change for man that has not proven to accept you as you are. Here's another illustration. It's kind of like this. It's like I want um, I want a, a an older. I think it's around a 70, 72 um, convertible Mercedes, the two seat. I want one of those with the rag top. I want one of those. Well, and see the one I want is I don't want one necessarily just, I don't want one, you know, laid out, fixed all, I don't, I don't want it fixed up. I, I want it in some kind of condition that I can have the joy of restoring it. Now watch this, when I find that car and whenever the time is right for me to buy that car, um, I'm gonna have to buy that car as is and accept it as my own, take ownership of it just like it is, seeing its potential. But watch this. The way I get the full potential that is in the car to manifest is that I now have to further invest in the car that I love and own. But I got to love it enough to own it. You're not supposed to ever change your life for a man that has not loved you enough to make you his wife. And listen to what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7, 33 and 34. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There's difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And it goes on to say the same thing about the husband pleasing the wife. But... You, you, you're not around here trying to figure out how I can please you, and we ain't married. You know, until we married, my only focus is the Lord. And as long as I know I'm pleasing God, I'm good. If you can't see the, if you can't see the value in me as I am, you don't deserve me. I'm not gonna be around here changing my whole life around for you with no commitment, and then you move on to somebody else, and I lost. 
who I am trying to be what you want me to be. You done gave me all this plastic surgery. E even the dog don't recognize you no more. The dog, <laughs> you walk in the house, now the dog go to growling because he don't know who you are. You done changed everything messing around with this demonic man. Oh, praise the Lord. Okay, now let me move to number four. It's 40 minutes already. Good God of mine. Well, let me read Ephesians 5, 25 through 28 under number three. Never change for a man that has, has not proven to accept you already. Ephesians 5, 25 through 28 says, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish sought men to love their wives as their own bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself um, so he says husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it a husband loves his wife he sees all of the potential in her and he sacrifices to give her or to empower her to become all that the father intended. He's not sitting around criticizing her and got her jumping through hoops to win his love or win his approval. No, 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 no. He already approves of her as she is. See, see a man, you, you, may, you may be 25, 30 pounds overweight, but you know what? A man that loves you is going to love you even with that weight on you. And when y'all get married, maybe even before you get married, he's going to say, babe, let's walk. Come on. Let's, let's do a little walking. And he's going to help you out. But your testimony is going to be, watch this. My man loved me when I was 40 pounds overweight. And because my man loved me when I was 40 pounds overweight, it empowered me to lose the weight because I want to be the best I can be for my man. That's how it go. That's how it go. But these, 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 these dudes that y'all dealing with that's got you jumping through all these hoops and making all of these changes, they ain't worth all that. They ain't worth all that. And then number four and finally, let me get out of here. Now, this is a big one. Big one right here. Okay, this is a big one right here because I've been a lot, especially from over in the, um, especially from the, the UK, there's this term that they use, a, a, a number of influencers use this term, terminology that I'm connected with. And first time I heard it was when I was dealing with some of them from, from Europe, high value woman, high value man, as we call it in the church here in the States, we call it uh, virtue woman. I call it queen consciousness. They call it high value. High value woman, and then you got the high value man, which you know I agree with the premise. But but here's here's the question that I have for you as a as a woman of dignity: Is it high value that you're attracted to, or is it just high profile? You got to know the difference. A dignified woman knows the difference between high value versus high profile. There are a lot of you that are attracted. Number four is, I'm giving it to you now. Is it high value or is it high profile? You got to know the difference. A, a dignified woman knows the difference between a man that is high value versus a man that has just put on a facade and is just simply high profile. You see, there are a lot of you that are attracted to carnal men and, you know, because you're carnal, you're not spiritual in other words, you're not really, you're not even really using a lot of your intellect in this matter. You just caught up in your emotions and your, 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 your sexual drive. A dude knows all I need to do to break all of her defenses down is just put on a high profile front. So I, I'll buy me a, 
I'll buy me a, 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 a watch, I'll buy me a suit, I'll buy some shoes, some Louboutin tennis shoes or some uh, true religion jeans and I'll put on a high profile, get me a fresh cut and I'll get on Instagram and I'll create a high profile to cover up my low value. Because nobody's really teaching women today how to recognize high value. High value is not, is not something external. In other words, I can't determine that you high value by what you wear. I can't determine that you high value by what you drive. You're not high value because of how much money you make. That doesn't make you high value, not in my opinion. Not, not from where I'm coming from, you know. High value comes from things that are internal. It's the quality of a man's heart. Thank you so much. It's the quality of a man's character. It's the consistency of a man's character. Watch this. It is the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's the safeness of a man's character. That makes him high value. Now, 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 please don't misunderstand what I'm saying to you. I'm not saying that as a, as, as, a, as a woman of dignity, you're supposed to ignore the financial piece. No, not, I'm not, not at all am I saying that. But I am saying that there are a lot of men who are making six and seven figures who are trash. And they, they will lure you in with your attraction to money and things and image and profile and then once you get in there and you trapped by this situation, you realize that you got, got yourself nothing but trash and you thought it was high value. In fact about it, there are a lot of you that have passed over high value men who had a low profile running behind high profile men who had a low value. See, see the little dude that you ran over with the tennis shoes and the jeans you didn't know he making two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year because he he don't he don't look like he ain't projecting it. The cat that you ran behind with with the car and all that kind of stuff spent all his little money on that. He ain't got nothing else. He got bad credit and he broke. He looked good. He's just a good looking broke dude. And you you ran behind the, the what you thought was the value was nothing but a profile. The other cat was high value, but he, he maintains a low profile. So if you're a dignified woman, you are you are looking deep enough. Y'all ought to get me up to at least a thousand likes on this one before I shut it down in a few minutes. If you're if you're a dignified woman, thank you so much. You ought to be looking deep enough that you can discern. See, high value has to be discerned. Can't, you can't judge that from no Instagram uh, thing. Mm -mm. You can't judge that from no Instagram thing. No, 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 you can't do it. You got to be able to discern. And then you got to use your brain to detect, to analyze. Come on now. So is it high value or is it just a high profile? Some of y'all are attracted to that. You keep talking about all the men are dogs. All the ones you choose are dogs. All men ain't no dogs. Why, why would you consistently hit this button to watch me on here if you believe all men are dogs? You don't believe that. It's just the ones that you're attracted to. And see, we have to, we have to bring you into a more mature uh, sensibility relative to your uh, taste in men. You need to grow up. You still got a little child, a little girl's mentality when it comes down to choosing dudes and you constantly running for profile because profile is like sugar. It's like sugar. See, but value is like broccoli. It's going gonna, it's gonna to sustain you. It's going to last. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. And listen to what the Bible says and I'm done. In Luke 12 and 15, it says, and he said unto them, take heed. And beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. 
You can't determine no high value by no things. High value is based on conversation. See, you need a man that has enough swag to keep you, you know, keep you curious and interested. Enough God to really lead you with honor and, and gently. But he got to have he has to have those internals. See, you need a man that's a high value man is able to look beyond. Thank you so much. He's able to look beyond the surface. You know, he knows that what you are at 25, you know, you, 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 you Coke bottle, you, you size three, four, five, six and all that. He don't expect you to be that at no 55. No, he going to he going to love he's going to love every phase of you because he's high value. See, a high profile guy, he going to drop you. The moment you pick up five, 10 pounds, he going to drop you. You out of here. You, you don't you. You don't wear no six no more. You mean to tell me you wear a seven? I'm out of here. I'm gone. Because he's shallow. He's a little boy. He's not he's not really a man. He's a little boy that's that's learned how to create a high profile that attracts a certain kind of woman who does not know who she is or what she needs. So that's all I came on here to tell you all tonight. And I really love you all. And, and I hope that, you know, I hope that, you know, you, I hope you hear my heart. And I hope you feel, you know, the spirit that I'm delivering this to you in, because these are the wrong times to be a, a woman that is uninformed. And so I wanted to come on here tonight and to share this with you as the spirit of God gave it to me today. Father, I thank you for just the opportunity to speak into so many lives, so many lives. And now, God. Allow the anointing of the Holy Spirit to rest upon them tonight. That they will sense the peace of Jesus Christ. And give them the wisdom and the fortitude to do the things that they need to do to set their lives in order. And God, give them the power to forgive themselves for the mistakes they've made. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, I need you all to do something for me. I need you to go to my website as soon as we're done, or if you've got another device near, I want you to go to my website, rcblakes.com, and I want you to subscribe to my mailing list. I'm getting ready to send out something. I'm getting ready to blast something to my mailing, to my mailing list that um, I think will bless you. It's just, it's just it's a short encouragement that I send. I'm getting ready to send it uh, maybe as early as tomorrow, and I'd love for you to be a part of uh, a part of that. So go to my mailing list, go to my website, rcblakes.com, right on the front page, you're going to see something to the effect, join mailing list here or something like that. Hit the button, takes less than 60 seconds. Um, also, don't forget those of you that may need any kind of counseling, the description, the link rather is going to be in the description. Um, my, my latest online program, which is content based on our most recent uh, Queenology 2.0 conference. Well, that content has, be, has, has become my latest online program, Queenology 2.0, the training for reigning. The training for reigning. So if, if that's something you're interested in, maybe you already have Queenology, uh, if you want 2.0, it's there on the website, rcblakes.com right now. And just know that, um, Lisa and I love you. I always forget to put my little note in front of me. And I be having so many things I need to talk about. Tomorrow night, um, I think I'm going to come on and I'm going to, we're going to talk some Kingology tomorrow night. So all of my brothers, all of you that uh, have men in your lives, invite them to come in to share with us tomorrow night. I want to empower the brothers tomorrow night. Let's say 8 o'clock, same time. Same station tomorrow night. I want to speak into the lives of the brothers. If you're not following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to do more over there. R.C. Blakes. 
uh, is my Instagram handle. Follow me on Instagram. Thank you to all of you that uh, sold into my life. I so appreciate you. It makes, um, you know, it's, it's always amazing to me that you all love me enough to sow into my life. I appreciate you with all of my heart. Okay, I got to get out of here. It's 55 minutes. I'm not going to hit an hour tonight. I love you. I thank God for you. rcblakes.com. And um, hey, I'm actually thinking about, I'm actually thinking about this. I'm thinking about creating a means whereby um, we can actually talk to one another by way of a certain phone. Of course, I know the line is going to blow up like crazy, but I'm just trying to create ways to connect with you. I don't know if that's something you all would like or not, but there's a, there's a phone that we can use that uh, while we're live. You can call me and we can have some conversation and you can ask questions. We can chop it up and work our way through some things. Let me know if that's something you think you'd like to do in the comments. All right, did y'all get me up to my thousand likes? Let me see something here. I'm at 784, so that means I need, what, 200, and what, about 16? 216, okay. Yo, come on, get me my thousand likes. People don't like me to ask for it, but I, you know, I, I just believe that you ought to strive for excellence in whatever you do. I'll just be out here doing it all willy-nilly. Y'all get me up to my, get me up to my two, my, my uh, 1,000 likes. All right, I'm at 845, 857, okay. I'm climbing, I'm at 865. Come on, I got 1,300 of y'all in here, so help me out. 872, 885, I feel like an auctioneer now. All right, I love you all. I know you're going to get me that 890. Uh, I know you're going to get me that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, to all of you that uh, sold into my life tonight, I love you with all my heart. 908, 912. Let me go and see if I'm going to, I want to watch it get there. 920. Uh, okay, I need what, 80 more? 925, 75, I need 75 more. 934, okay, 945, 55, and I'm there. And okay, 953, yep, we're almost there. 958, and okay, 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 let me see. 970, okay, I need 30. I don't think I've ever gotten to 1,000 while I was actually on. 972. Mm, let me see. 974, 979. Okay, 988, 12 away. 991. 998. Okay, come on now. I keep having notifications. 1000, I'm there. I love y'all. Have a great night. I'll talk to you tomorrow night. Invite the brothers to come in tomorrow night. Talk about it. I may use that phone tomorrow night so I can talk to some of the brothers. Invite them to come in. God bless you. I love you now. Talk to you real soon.